cause a developer to come into your town and ignore all of your zoning laws, to tell you your rules don't matter. That law is the Massachusetts Comprehensive Permit Law, commonly called Chapter 40B. I followed two 40B projects in my own backyard, the Eastendale Pine Street Project and the Ames Shovel Shop Project. blunt instrument. It is a crowbar. It says to a community, whether you like it or not, you are going to get some affordable housing put into your nice, leafy, bucolic suburban community. It, it's not fair to me for you to come into my neighborhood and take that piece of property and do anything more than what I thought you could do. They really aren't interested in affordable housing. They're interested in building. I don't want a big hassle, you know, uh, without witnesses. I want the police here. The builder said that uh, he doesn't, uh, not in my building, this is private property. Well, it's a public meeting that, that uh, MEPA chose to have here about a project that's under um, 40B. Uh, you can't keep that in executive session. Gary, I'm going to allow you to videotape it. Okay. okay. But you have to, you have to keep it. Tell me, you direct it. You tell me what you want, and I'll follow your rules. Okay. Um, under the current proposal, the Antrim opening shop, built in 1865, the engine house, built in 1853, and the power house built in 1907. The south wing of the steam hammer shop here, built in 1857, would be entirely demolished. When I first got involved in shovel shop, um, we were up there and there's, you know, people were frustrated. They did, were distrustful of uh, the developer and the zoning board. For, it's a very, for, it's, I'm sorry, it's a very simple and straightforward let me, let me question. Let me finish, let me finish. I would like you to answer my question, I'm, not I'm some other question. It. I'm answering okay. it, I'm okay. answering it, okay? That first night, you have, you know, 100 people in the halls with their torches and pitchforks and they're angry and, and they want to speak and, there's no guidelines to the public. The public doesn't know what to expect at the zoning board meetings. What really is a low income or an affordable housing? Just what does it really mean? Does it mean you use inferior material or is it shoddy workmanship? Look what happened to the big dig in Boston. They were using bad cement. Excuse what me, is it really that you do? Ma'am, excuse me. How do you know who's gonna be in here? How do we know what's gonna happen? Do you mind what you're doing to the neighborhood? Is that, do those Mr. things Johnson, weigh? You, you, but, you, you want okay. to one too far with that. Yeah. No. I think, I think the Eastern Board of Appeals will hold a continued hearing from October 15, 2008 on a comprehensive permit act application for week. One of the most criticized aspects of 40B is that it was given to the zoning boards rather than the planning boards. In most towns, the planning boards deal with the larger issues of site development and site planning. The zoning boards deal with variances for side yard setback or somebody wants a, a porch on their backyard and how close is it to the rear lot line. Small stuff. The process wears people out on town boards that for the most part are volunteers and may not have a great expertise on the particular board that they're, they're sitting. Well, I'm gonna, I, I all of a sudden now, I'm mixing the two, but you're mixing the two, so you're forcing me to mix the two. So I, I don't, uh, I don't know, I can't understand that. The local town does not have a law firm that's well educated and very knowledgeable about the process. They have peer review consultants that they hire who are very expert at this kind of thing, and we've represented two dozen or so communities as peer review consultants. So if they don't have it in-house, they can buy it.
Yeah, I was born in Easton and I moved here from Highland Street about 30 years ago, 35 years ago. Well, I, I wanted my kids to live somewhere close by and, and they said that I'd need an acre of land per house. I couldn't build on to what I've got here unless I did have it. Yet they want to build 28 units on three something point acres down there, which is basically all water if anybody's been here a long time. The whole street floods out and I don't know how he's going to get away with that. but. Well, when I came here, I, I didn't know what 40B was, but uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's ruining the towns. The state recognized there was an affordable housing need, and they couldn't come up with a way to address it on every community level of need. They said, we can't predict what the need for housing is in 351 cities and towns. So we are gonna pick a surrogate number, which is 10%. What they're saying in essence, here's the, the key, 10% of the housing in a city should be affordable and 10% of the housing in a farming village in the Berkshires should be affordable housing. They're applying the same parameters for two totally different way of, ways of life. And I don't think it's appropriate. I think it took a turn for the worst when my successors decided that the state would not continue to invest serious money in affordable housing. Well, the only way you can get it if the Commonwealth is not prepared to put some resources into it is by asking developers to cross-subsidize affordable units. In comes the agent, the dreaded Texas developer, who comes in from out of town and doesn't know how we do things. The law was written for them to take advantage of it which almost inevitably means you get densities and developments which uh, in many cases are not consistent with what the town wants to do, actually give you a piddling number of affordable units, you know, 10 or 15 percent. What's that? I mean, it's not nothing, but it's practically nothing. This whole program is outrageous at this point. It was completely destroyed by DHCD with their regulations. They, they, they just churn out more regulations every year, and every regulation that they put out is, is, is in favor of the developer. It's the regulations that the cities and towns are uh, scratching their heads over, not the law. Yeah, it's, it's just that the line's been drawn in the sand, and there's a certain level of, of stubbornness that nobody wants to admit that if you look at the uh, track record, and I, the specific number at the moment escapes me, if you average out the, the number of units built under 40B that are truly affordable and annualize it, it's a very, very small number. Uh, my name is Dan Pilotta. I'm a selectman in the town of Hanover. We're currently at 8.4%, and we got to 8.4% by approving a project called North Point uh, about four or five years ago um, that is an over 55 uh, apartment complex, 72 units on three acres of land, which is an extremely dense uh, project uh, for the town of Hanover. Hanover embraced this project, worked with the developer to get as many units as possible on this site. The developer, before even completing the project, while he was still working on the second building, but had the first building some partially occupied, came back and said, uh, this project's not going to work economically. Uh, we want to turn it into condominiums. Uh, the town of Hanover said no. Ultimately, the state ruled against the town and, you know, the 79-year-old's walking down the corridor in their walker and a kid's riding by her on a skateboard. The court said that the, the 40B law is to ensure that the projects are financially feasible. The Inspector General, I think, estimates, I think the number was $100 million left on the table uh, from 40B projects that are owed to communities right now.
by and large for the IG, and I heard him say this, to say this is the biggest swindle, he didn't know the Medoff thing was coming up, but the biggest swindle in Massachusetts is witch hunting to, to really come after developers. There'll be some cases of people that did things, we know that, uh, you know, we've seen some of the 10 reports he's had. Those were 10 projects DHCD picked themselves for him to audit, and he found flaws and extreme irregularities, financial irregularities in 10 of them. Now towns are spending money on lawyers thinking they're going to collect these million dollars, and they're not, as far as I can tell, that they're not entitled to them. If they end up collecting something, hopefully it'll be more than what they paid their lawyers to get it, because I think there's a lot of hyperbole about this whole stuff. The real problem lies with excess profits um, either being hidden by the developer or uh, the lack of a, a real auditing standard to discover what those hidden profits are and exposing them and getting that money back to the town.